everybody, this is what you're waiting for, and this is part three of the food storage for newbies. And hopefully I got my dog settled down and he's not going to be barking, <laughs> but we'll try it and see. Um, the first thing that I didn't get to at, with my, other, my last video was um, I was suggesting to get a swing away. Uh, can opener and that's just an old-fashioned manual can opener uh, my family had the same one I swear for about 20 years and it still works today she still has it my mom has it in, in her drawer uh, but some of the new ones for some reason they have just not lasted um, like the old-fashioned ones and it's just pretty much like that about anything you know nowadays the newer versions are never as good as the original um, but what I didn't get to in my last video was talking about um, storing the can uh, the uh, canned goods. I also wanted to mention that canned goods are really heavy, so if you're thinking about bugging out a uh, bug out bag, uh, evacuation bag, I wouldn't really think of really a lot of canned goods because they are heavy, but they are perfect when you are there and you need food, and it's a great food supply. Okay, now we're going to talk about adding to your food storage. And I'm going to break this up into two videos. One is just basic things about, you know, adding things to your to your food storage. And the second one is sort of like how I started. So the first one is you can add just very easily. Uh, whenever you go to the store, instead of buying two cans of carrots, you buy four. Or instead of buying... Uh, a, a can of spaghetti sauce, buy an extra one. Uh, a bag of rice, go ahead and buy two. Right now, food prices are, they're starting to go up, but there's still, still so much out there that's reasonably priced that you can afford. Uh, the next thing that I would suggest is you look for sales. Instead of just going out and saying, okay, I'm going to buy this this week. Look for what's on sale. If you find a uh, 50 cent tuna and 50 cent is really good in your neighborhood, go ahead and, and use $5 and buy as much as you can or as much as you possibly can. You know, whether that's a couple dollars extra a week or if it's $20 extra a week or $100, whatever you can afford. You can do it on a small scale or a big scale. That's what's great about canned goods. You can get two or you can get a case. I mean, it's completely up to you. Uh, another idea to do is to set aside a certain amount instead of just, you know, picking up what you normally pick up and get an extra one or looking for what's on sale and getting a few extra of those. You can say, in our budget, we can afford $5 a week. And you could make it sort of like a fun event for you and your, your spouse or your children. How much food can we buy for that $5? And the thing is, when you when you start doing your food supply. You want very, I guess you could say cheap food, uh, but nutrient dense if you can, you know, if you can get it nutrient dense. But I would see about getting things that, like rice, you can get a lot of rice for a very cheap amount. Vegetables, you can get quite a few, you know, they're 50 cents a can. So if it was up to me between, you know, a dollar fifty each for some mushrooms or thirty-five cents for a can of maybe soup that your kids like, I would stock up on the soup because you can get a lot more food for you can get a lot more bang for your buck, I guess you can say. You can really stretch that dollar. Uh, so that's a good way to build up your food supply. Now you also have to remember you need nutrient, you know, you need um, proteins, which are going to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, you need a wide range of canned goods, uh, fruits, vegetables. Don't just think of vegetables. Don't just think of canned meats. Think of a wide variety of foods. And you'll also want those things like Chef Boyardee raviolis, the things that are a meal in a can. Those are wonderful. The soups, uh, if you have some soups you can easily bulk it up by adding a little bit of protein like some chi uh, canned chicken or add in some more canned vegetables and make it stretch a little bit so those are just some ideas but try to get the most bang for your buck um, also don't forget about things like cereal 
And cereals are great because they're usually uh, usually on sale. People, the stores usually have good sales on cereal. Plus, they usually, if it's a uh, Kellogg's or Post, you can usually find coupons also. So they're pretty decently priced. Kids like them. They last quite a while. You might, you know, want to think about storage-wise. You know, making them if you're going to have a large quantity, where uh, rats and you know mice or bugs or weevils or something won't get in them. Uh, but they're really great. But be leery of everything you buy of the serving sizes. Don't think a pound of rice and see, oh, it has, I don't even know how many, 10 servings or 15 servings. Um, you really have to know how much your family eats. I tell you, um, the cereal that my kids eat, they, my son, my teenage son, probably eats about four servings on the box, well, what they said they eat on the box, because they love cereal and they eat a lot. So just realize that if you're thinking that a box of cereal is going to last you a week feeding three kids every single, you know, breakfast, uh, you might go through a box and see how long it really lasts. And I do that with pretty much everything. I mean, if it says, you know, a quarter cup of beans, uh, it, it, it's that going to be the only thing they eat or are they going to add things with it? So really look at you, what your family's eating and see how long the canned goods or the uh, the dry goods last. So, oh, by when you go and buy your quantity, like say you're going to go and something's on sale, uh, make sure you like it before you buy it. Uh, my kids love Chef Boyardee raviolis. We went and there was a really great sale on this raviolis, uh, no name brand, the store brand. Got it home, bought a bunch of them, about, about 10, 15 cans, and they were nasty. We didn't like them. Uh, nobody ate them and we ended up giving them to the food pantry because we knew nobody in the family was going to eat them. So that was just a waste of money. So it, go and get one if it's a new product. Taste it if it's good. You can go back and get as many as you want, you know, before the sale goes off. So make sure of that. Also, don't go crazy and think, oh, I'm going to go buy potted meat and all this. Things that you've never had before. Buy only what you're going to eat and what your family will eat. Growing up, my mom always had potted meat and deviled little ham cans and sardines. <laughs> Nobody in the family ate them, but she always had them for, you know, a rainy day or if, you know, a hurricane hits, we always have the deviled ham. Like, we would have even ate it anyway. I mean, it's, and it was, I think when we, when I left home, we went through the cabinet and it was like expired six years before that. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're not going to eat it, don't buy it. If no one will eat it, don't buy it. So, definitely make sure you, whatever you eat, then you get extra of. If it's a good deal, but your family's not going to eat it, I don't care how cheap it is, if they're not going to eat it, it's, it's not a good deal. And it's taking up space. And eventually you will grow out of canned goods. You'll never grow completely out, but once you hit, you know, depending on how much storage you have, you'll, if you maybe you only have space for enough for two months. After you hit that two-month mark, then you're going to have to go back and check into the other things, like the long-term food storage of rice and beans, dehydrated items. But this is a great first step. Kingas are a great first step. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it here, and I'm going to talk about the system we used with canned goods and, other, and our dry goods. And uh, I guess I'll pick it up in the next video. So what you waiting for? Bye.